everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Pineapple Podcast, a Cherry Creek Innovation Campus production. I'm one of your hosts. My name is Morgan Dawson. And my name is Audra Dunlevy. I'm filling in for Nate Barrett today. And I am so excited to introduce someone to you who has had 15 years of TV production experience with huge names like Oprah, um, Ellen DeGeneres, um, also with um, The Hollywood Reporter. And she has interviewed so many incredible celebrities um, Mandy Moore, I, I could go on and on, but um, I will let her do that. Layla Schmidt, one of my BFFs. We are so excited to have you. Welcome. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. We're happy to have you because yeah. we talked to you before we even started the podcast. I think you were the first person we talked to um, just to get a feel of what it would be like to be constantly in these situations where we'd have to converse for up to an hour sometimes. Um, so when you were first starting out um, in the industry, were you, did you think you were a natural conversationalist? Um, when I would say a natural conversationalist in like real life situations, um, but put me in a work situation, I was very shy, very shy. Um, so it's confidence that I had to build up and still do to this day. Um, I majored in public speaking, so speaking in front of a crowd wasn't scary to me, but in business situations, I got in intimidated easily. Okay. So uh, that's the skill that I have worked on, but continually have to work on. Yeah. Yeah. And Hi, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and when you were starting out, um, you started out on Ellen, correct? Or was it Oprah? I started out, I first did an internship at 2020 and then I started my, my first job out of college though. Um, after that was at Oprah. Oh, okay. And was that when you were, were like the pressure's on, I gotta, I gotta start these conversation skills or were you relaxed up until it was time to be on screen or talking in a business room? So it took a while. Um, I would say at Oprah, I was a research coordinator. So, I mean, I was way down on the totem pole, um, but, you know, walking into a meeting, um, I didn't speak, which I learned in the business world. You kind of don't speak when you're the bottom of the totem pole. That's just my experience. Um, but that's something that, again, I'm still learning because sometimes I, I do need to speak up when I don't. Um, so no, I didn't, I definitely did not have that confidence in the, in the very beginning. And I like to sit and observe. Um, and back in this, in that day, I pretty much observed a lot more than I should have. I should have spoken up more, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's a learned skill. And I watched, I watched Oprah. We watched the show every day when it taped and who, I mean, I think she's the best interviewer of all time. Um, so I watched her um, and I worked with the producers in putting together those interviews. I was, like I said, bottom of the totem pole. So I was doing the research for those interviews. Mm -hmm. So just the initial research for the producer to even learn about it, to then go to Oprah with it. So um, that was at Oprah. And then at Ellen, I not only did the research, but I also came up with the questions myself but still it was my boss that would go meet with Ellen. And then at the Hollywood Reporter, I did the research, I came up with my own questions and then I was the one doing the interviews. <clears throat> so my career built on itself. Um, and with that, I think my confidence also built over time. Okay, tell us some of your favorite people that you interviewed <laughs> and your experiences because I know some of them off the top of my head and I totally <laughs> could just, what's the word? Um, <laughs> you use it all the time when you like, freak out because of someone. Fangirl. Fangirl, yes. thank you. I'm like, I know that you know what I'm trying to say. Who is so, your fangirl moment? I would say I've had a lot of fangirl moments. <laughs> but the most fun that I've had during an interview and the best chemistry was with Anthony from Queer Eye. Yeah. Him and I hit it off. Um, I kind of broke a rule a little bit that I like to keep of um, not talking too much to my interview subject before the interview but um the producer at the time that was with me during that interview um even had to stop us from talking so he's like save it for camera we've got to get this on camera um and him and I just kind of hit it off uh and so I got to interview him I want to say three times um and it was just it was just so nice because it was an established trust and also we just had good chemistry and we were just gabbing the whole time that was such a 
fun interview to watch when you sent that to us. Oh my yeah. goodness. <laughs> He's so funny. And you guys do have a good chemistry, like just mm-hmm. the cadence of the conversation and, yeah. you know, you would pick up where he left off. And I think that's what Morgan and Nate did such a great job of this last semester. Do you kind of want to talk about how things started with Layla? Um, like for our podcast? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so for the viewers who don't know, basically everything that we had planned for this second year, because last year there wasn't a second year planned until like third quarter yeah and then everything that you had planned I honestly don't even think I knew anything about it I just kind of came to school this year and we were like we got to figure something else out and we were sitting here we'd like we need a project something and then we came up with the podcast and Nate and I have very different personalities so I was kind of nervous because we joke a lot like me and Nate we joke a lot we mess around but I was like are we going to be able to handle like serious business talk? Um, because last year we, we would have like functions, mm-hmm. but usually we were in the classroom where we would mess around and Miss Emily Reed would be like, all right, calm down. Like, <laughs> <laughs> let's focus. Um, but I think Nate and I, like once we're on camera, we have really good chemistry with whoever we're talking to. And we just kind of like form a bond with whoever we're talking to because we're all interested in the same subjects. Um, And that's actually one of the questions I was talking to you. Do you ever, when you're in an instance, because with the amount of interviews and experience you've had, there's got to be an instance where you're not feeling chemistry or you're not feeling like you're feeling a lull in the conversation. So what are your tips when that does happen? I can tell you that I, you'll hear of my nervous laugh a lot when that happens. <laughs> That's not what's happening right now. Okay. Um, but I, I have this nervous laugh and you just kind of fill the space. But sometimes, you know, if an interview is just not working, you just cut it short. Um, but I've also had instances where it was live and whether the interview subject walked off camera Um, because they decided the interview was done. um, Or I've had an instance where somebody said something that completely threw me for a loop that was very inappropriate um, in the sense of something that he told me about his past. And I just didn't know how to save the interview. Uh, But you do, you pivot immediately. Um, I just looked down at my card and ignored it and went on. Um, Oh my gosh, how awkward. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what to do with myself. Those instances. I think I would just cry. (laughs) Just kind of sit there awkwardly like, okay. Yeah. (laughs) I didn't know if he was joking or not. And so I giggled and I moved on. Uh Um, But I think, I think that instance might've been taped and we immediately edited that out. Okay. But uh, the one that walked off camera live, that happened. That happened to me at Comic-Con. Um, and that wasn't fun. <laughs> oh, uh-huh. There's not much saving it when it's just you. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Oh, yeah. Man. Does that answer your question? Yes, of course. Um, okay. But in those instances, do you kind of like give yourself a pep talk afterwards? You're like, okay, that was the situation that wasn't my conversational skills. Because I know a lot of kids um especially in our generation have a lot of social anxiety and have trouble carrying the conversation whether it be like in general or after something awkward happens they kind of like yes yeah. I, I don't i know it happens to me um so what would your advice to them be with try to find a common ground mm-hmm. i think because you can you can always bond over a common ground. With Anthony, the immediate connection for him and I was, uh, he loves food, we love food, um, but he was the child, He's he comes from a Polish family and I come from an Iranian family and both of us were first generation. And so we immediately bonded over that. Like I asked him questions such as, um, how did you learn how to speak English? You know, was it from your parents or school or Sesame Street? And for him, it was Sesame Street. And that was the same thing for me as well. Um, you know, a good thing to fall back on, you can always ask about the weather <laughs> or talk about the weather. We've all experienced it. We've all seen it. And so that's a good common ground. Um, but I think finding a common ground and building off of that is the key to a good conversation. Yeah, 
That's great advice because I agree with Morgan. I think a lot of students these days and a lot of the listeners are struggling with, you know, especially since the pandemic, they're like very antisocial, just not sure how to start a conversation. They're very on social media and that's kind of where they live within their relationship. So when it comes to in person, which we've talked about communication being such an important, not only professional skill, but life skill to, to be able to network, to be able to, um, essentially say like, Hey, here's why you should hire me. Here's why I'm the next person that's going to bring this company to where it needs to go, you know, kind of beyond their current situation. Um, but in regards to, you said you majored in public speaking. Um, was that an easy major to be in or what were some of your biggest learning lessons that you had to kind of work through in your beginning times in that major? Um, I really liked <clears throat> the speaking classes, like the speech classes. The things that I didn't like was with that major, you have to you have to learn about the history of of public speaking and that dates back to like greek i think it's, is it theology the i don't want to call it greek theology because i don't even know if it's that but this is how much i paid attention in that class <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> clearly back, it really said it <laughs> back to when the originals were standing on soapboxes yes <laughs> yeah pretty much um that kind of stuff like i i am not like i am not a history buff um so those classes were really hard for me where you had to like read and give a quiz on what you read and talk about it. Um, I loved the, the classes where I got to do the public speaking, whether it was business and professional speaking or um, even just regular public speaking or learning about communication. Um, but it was like the history stuff that I just. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, actually going off of what you were saying about, about kids, especially in the pandemic, like, I mean, you've seen it, but in our schools, as soon as I walked into school, when we were allowed to be in school this year, nobody talked to anybody. Yeah. It was completely silent. And the teachers are like, what's going on here? I believe that the only reason I talked in this class is because Nate was in my class last year. And then the girls who are now in our class, they kind of all stayed together. Just it happened that way with last names. But yeah, at my home high school, it was complete silence. And now we're all back in person. It's so loud. The teachers are finally like, okay, calm down. And I'm like, yes, say it again. Cause I haven't had that for months. And so I think the only reason I I'm still kind of social is because of this podcast. Cause I've had to like force myself to talk. So it's weird going from talking to people on podcasts and then going to my last two classes for the past few months and being completely silent because I could talk. Yes, uh, I can talk. <laughs> yeah, this is why we get along so great, right? Yes. All three of us, girl talk time. Um, but I, I think you really gave Nate and Morgan such a good stepping stone into this experience over this past year. Um, and I think some of the podcasts, I mean, you can talk about some of the scenes or, or times when um, it was hard or you were like, yes, I nailed that. Like, can you think of some like intros or outros that you were like, yes, good job, Morgan. Um, they're like, oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so for, um, I feel like afterwards I always pick myself apart, but for Alon, I was so nervous because my mom knows that that's like my fit, one of my favorite restaurants. Like, cause we went there for a field trip last year and it's after restaurant yes, in, Denver, after yeah. in Denver. And so I was on my way to work for like two days prior, just like, thank you for joining us on the pineapple podcast. And then I'd say his entire intro and it was, it was pretty long. Like he's a very successful guy. And so when I nailed it, I was like, yes, like in my head and I'm sitting on the floor at my dad's at my dad's house in my room and I have a lamp like right in front of me. <laughs> and so that was like my setup. And I had woke up at like three 30 cause I had work and then school online. But that was one where I was like, okay, you did it. And then I had sweat afterwards because <laughs> we hung up and I was like, oh but gosh. I think I can't really think of one where I was like, mm, I didn't really like that because despite what I thought messed up, what I thought I messed up, I think the podcast with Nate and the person we were interviewing was just amazing. I loved all of them. Yeah. So I don't really care 
felt that I messed up as long as it turned out good. Well, and I think the people that you work with, knowing how to communicate with them is so important. And, mm -hmm. you know, obviously you guys are still learning, but I'm so impressed with what you guys have done. But I, I think something, Layla, for you, how was it communicate, not just with the people, you know, the celebrities, um, with all the people that you've interviewed, but with your coworkers, like what kind of communication barriers did you find within the workplace, kind of behind the scenes, and how did you learn to work through those barriers? Um, I think, uh, I don't know if it was a barrier, but something that is important in communication is it's a give and take. You, even though you communicate what you want to say, you also have to be a good listener. And something that um, with what I do um, is still important and, and I still have to work on, and I think I will for the rest of my life, but you have to really work on listening and reacting to that rather than if you're in a work situation, whether you're standing up in a conference room giving a presentation or you're on camera doing an interview um, or you're in a meeting, even just with your boss and the rest of your team and you're speaking, you, you want to speak, but you also want to take the time to listen. You don't always want to be the one talking. And I think to be an effective communicator, you have to know to listen. Um, and that gets difficult in a podcast situation where it's being recorded and then it's going to be broadcast because sometimes you're thinking of the next question and not really listening to what someone's saying. Um, I find myself doing that. Yeah, me too. I mean, <laughs> just in like the first time I did the podcast, I don't remember who it was. Um, uh, for you? Yeah, Alyssa. Or Stefan, maybe. Stefan Meyer. I don't remember anyway. Yeah, but I found myself kind of doing the same thing where I was thinking, okay, what is the next question that I'm supposed to ask? And then, you know, it's really hard to respond appropriately without them thinking like, did you even hear anything I just said? Because yeah. <laughs> you just went to, straight to the next question. Yeah. That's hard. And it gets difficult as you're talking to people higher in profile. And I'm not just talking about celebrities. I'm talking about your boss. They don't have a lot of time. Yeah. So sometimes I would run and catch my boss and we would do like a walk and talk. Like she's on her way to the bathroom and I need an answer. I need to say what I need to say concisely so I can get the right answer from her so I can move forward. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it's also just... I think it goes, it goes hand in hand and reading the room as well. Like knowing, okay, she really has like 30 seconds, yeah. uh -huh. you know, um, this is something else, but again, it, it piggybacks off of each other. She really has 30 seconds. So what am I going to say in the least amount of words and speak effectively? <laughs> That's such great advice. And I think personalities can so play into this also, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, if someone has a really black and white personality, like give me the facts. I don't want any of the you know, clouds around it. Just give me the hard facts as fast as possible. Yeah. That's my husband. That's not me. I'm like, give me all of everything. I want to hear the whole, the whole big picture. And he's like, you know, he's used the phrase land the plane. Oh. <laughs> That's a good point though. Like, cause I can just kind of veer off and, but yeah. it's, it's important, especially when you have coworkers, bosses that you want to be really respectful of their time also. Um, I think that's me. Good Yes. Nate's black and white, land the plane. I'm like, yes, I get so lost in translation sometimes. I really like what you said about respecting time. And I think that that's something that's really good that's come out of COVID is that everybody is respectful of each other's time. In the beginning, everyone was working around the clock. And I think that as COVID went on, um, we saw it wasn't going anywhere. And so we realized that we're all super run down and that we need to be respectful and have more grace. Like, my baby was crying and you guys were respectful of that and let me take a moment, even though I had blocked out <clears throat> these 45 minutes for you guys, <clears throat> you guys gave me that grace a little bit. And I think that that's nice, um, being respectful of time. Also like not sending an email past eight o'clock, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. And, um, or, you know, respecting that you're in a meeting and you don't wanna just talk and talk and talk that everybody has things to do. Um, so that's a really good point. And that's something that I, I've loved that came out of COVID. I agree. And even yeah. in the hospitality industry, like with other people we've interviewed, they've also taken more time in their businesses and in their personal life to do the same thing. Um, like the Gaylord, they've given, they call them star, their employees stars, and they just give them so many benefits. And they're really, they're really, what's the word? I'm trying to think of the word. 
they're really they're like yes they're hospitable yeah. and, and enhancing yeah. it's like a happy employee when 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 uh, the employee's happy they'll they'll do better work yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is more money in the long term right return on investment so important and yeah. so actually to switch the conversation a little bit back to when we were first starting out and we first not interviewed well kind of we kind of interviewed you but what was your first impression of Nate and I's conversation skills and what did you have in mind for what our podcast was going to look like I didn't know what your podcast was going to look like, to be honest, um, because it was just forming itself at the time. But I, it was interesting to hear what you guys thought were your challenges. Um, and, you know, um, you've, you've shared that there's things that you try to work on in communication. But to me, I don't see that you struggle with those skills. Like it, it it's kind of mind blowing to me that, um, but it just shows us when we're insecure on the inside and we think that the world is seeing our weakness, um, you guys are doing a great job and in, in, I'm not seeing that weakness at all. I think you're a great conversationalist. Um, I think you're a natural. I think Nate was a natural or is a natural. <laughs> so um, yeah, and, and I think that that's an important lesson that I even need to know that sometimes when we're insecure, about something or we think we need to work on something that it's actually okay. It's good to be a work in progress, but um, you're actually better than you think you are. You're your own worst critic. Oh, yeah, that's so true. So true. Gosh, that's good <laughs> advice because I think everyone can, you know, relate with that in some capacity, just all the things that we think about ourselves. And then the second you ask anyone else, they're like, oh my gosh, I don't see that in you at all. That's not even that's something true. that would have been on my radar. Um, which I think for high schoolers, that's such a hard thing, you know, for the people listening to this podcast, the students in, in Cherry Creek and hopefully beyond, um, just advice for, for your professional life, for your current life is to have that, um, that confidence in your skill. And, and I hate to say it, but like fake it till you make it right. Like, mm -hmm. I, I really feel like that's what Morgan and Nate did. They, faked it till they made it, but they yes. also didn't really have to fake it because you guys are so natural. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's things that you have to work on. Um, but like Layla said, you're always going to be working on your communication. Like that's just, you know, relationships 101. You have to learn how to listen. You have to learn how to hear people, not just wait to respond, but you're, you know, I'm sorry, not, uh, gosh, what's that phrase? Listen to respond. What is that phrase? Dang it. <laughs> It's such a good one too. Uh, is it uh, listen, be quick to listen and slow to respond? Listen to hear, not to respond. Oh, listen to hear, not to respond. Oh, I do want to say something that blew me away. First of all, that you guys have pulled off this podcast. And second of all, right before we got on Morgan, I think we were just trying to connect at the time, but um, I heard you say something about editing it in, you know, editing in clips and I was like that's my girl right there <laughs> that's my language and even Audra hearing you say intro and outro which I don't even know if that was a part of your vocabulary before we spoke so I'm so impressed <laughs> we picked up on a lot more from you than you think oh so yeah sure. <laughs> For sure. we were we were writing down everything you said we recorded it we studied it but uh, I, I think this has been such a rewarding experience, not just for, I mean, I've been behind the camera, well, probably now like half the time. Yeah, you, <laughs> I think this is your third podcast yes. where you're in an interview. Yeah. yeah, but it's been so fun to do this and, you know, this COVID hybrid schedule for these guys and having two students in our class, like what a fun experience for you guys. Yeah, I didn't think so at first. I thought, in all honesty, I came to class on the first day, like, okay, let's just get this over with, which is not something I wanted to go into my senior year thinking, but this is my favorite class. I'm always excited to come to this class because I, this is what I'm going to do for my future. I'm going to, I'm going to be um, a management major at UNR next year. And then I think eventually I'm going to do either UNLV or hospitality colleges uh, abroad, but I mean, this is like, I know this is what I want to do for the rest of my life, whether it leads into like more conversational stuff or, well, I mean, it's going to help no matter where I go, but, or behind the desk or anywhere, just conversation you need to know. Mm -hmm. You need to know. Yeah. 
And just, I mean, you know, the, the main topic of our podcast today is just communication, why it's important. Um, and I know Morgan has an ending question for you that may be outside of this, but if you had to tell um, our listeners the most important piece to communicating and why it's so important, what would you say? And then I'll let Morgan ask you your final question. I know that's a really broad question because <laughs> it's so broad. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing about communication to know is uh, I even had to write this down in thinking about this podcast. I think communication is a give and take. Um, you can, you contribute to it, but you also have to take it in. And I think to sum it up, that is the most important because it, you know, everybody wants to be heard so you can make your point, but also, um, you also have to be a good a listener to be an effective communicator. All so right. Okay. And then to wrap up the podcast, uh, for the future leaders listening right now, is there any piece of advice, any at all, like it could even be a quote that you wanted to give to them? I would say one thing about my own path, I had no connections in the industry. I mean, I went to Colorado State and I'm more saying that because I went to Colorado State, but I have worked in Hollywood. I, you know, and so to me, the sky is the limit. How did I know that even though I was in, you know, at Colorado State, which is not known as like a film school, I was still able, I, I studied, I got my degree and I was still able to land my internship necessarily in my field that I got my degree in. Um, you know, at 2020, my first job was with Oprah. Like the sky is the limit. If you see an internship, go for it. If there's an opportunity to go to a job fair, go. You know, my biggest um, advice is, is just do it. <laughs> As Nike says, just do it. Um, just the sky is the limit. Don't let circumstances hold you back because you'll be blown away by uh, just applying to something or going to a job interview, what doors will open up. That's so true. That's such great advice, especially for these kids. Cause like we were talking about earlier, I don't know that they realize how awesome they are. And mm -hmm. when they put themselves out there, Morgan included, <laughs> um, when they put themselves out there, I mean, you just never know who's going to be like, Oh my gosh, I'm so excited that you applied here. I'm so excited that you took a chance on us because really for them, especially in hospitality right now, the sky is the limit. And the hospitality industry is making a huge comeback right now. And they need some really quality people there to serve the people that have been dying to be served for the last year and just yeah. ready to go and, you know, be waited on and, and served and, you know, just enjoy their time away from home. So, right. And, you know, it doesn't have to necessarily when you're applying to internships or going for the job, hey, everybody wants those big jobs. I'm just using this as an example. If you wanted to be in the hotel industry, yes, you might want to work at the Ritz Carlton or, you know, but you know, if your hometown has a Hampton Inn, sorry to drop brands, <laughs> but if your hometown and that's, that's an achievable goal, go for that. Then build on that for your next school. So um, it's really just get started. Yeah. Just do it. <laughs> we'll tag Nike in our, yeah. in our little podcast. Let's tag Nike. That's right. <laughs> well, I just had a ton of fun talking to you because we got to talk to you with the before and this is the after and it's just like all coming together because this is one of our last podcasts. I think the next one is going to be me and Nate talking about our experiences, mm -hmm. which is going to be interesting, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just really happy that you made this time slot to talk to us. Thank you. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. And you guys are great. I can't wait to see where you guys go next. Thank, Thank you, friends. Good right. to see you. Bye. Bye. Hello, everybody. Thank you for watching this episode of the Pineapple Podcast, where we got to sit down and talk with Layla Schmidt and talk about how we've honed our conversation skills. So if you want to stay updated with the Pineapple Podcast, follow us at Pineapple Podcast CCIC on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Again, that's Pineapple Podcast CCIC on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube.